1998 was the year of the woman in Washington state. That's according to the New York Times, reporting on the fact that 41% of state Senate seats were held by women, the highest percentage in the country. Jean Cole Wells was one of those groundbreaking leaders. You are what you are. She was an academic with a master's in education and master's and PhD in sociology, but public service was always calling. I had been an academic and worked with the U.S. Department of Education in implementing Title IX, making sure that um, our public schools, our higher education institutions treated women, treated girls fairly. What I needed to do in my heart was to really do all I could do is affect public policy, and that meant being in elective office. In 1992, Cole Wells was elected to the State House representing the 36th Legislative District, filling the seat vacated by me, Larry Phillips. She served two years, then she was appointed to the State Senate. Cole Wells spent 21 years in the State Senate affecting change. She sponsored legislation to fight human trafficking. She also became a champion for the then controversial plan to build a new Seahawk Stadium, now known as Lumen Field. Touchdown Seahawks! In 2015, Cole Wells got a call from me while I was preparing to retire from the King County Council. She won the seat and became the representative for District 4. She won a second term by 74%. She continued fighting for equality and social change, organizing six women's history panels, along with other members campaigning for charter amendments to make the sheriff an appointed position and to expand oversight of the sheriff's office. She also served as the budget chair during the COVID pandemic. The council ultimately passed a total of 13 budgets during this very chaotic time. One journalist described Cole Wells as a steel fist in a velvet glove. Jean Cole Wells is a winner. She has been for as long as I've known her. Jeannie uh, is tough. She is progressive. I once tagged her uh, our very own badass feminist icon. She is constantly producing legislation to protect the people who are living on the margins and her legacy will live on forever. We've learned a lot from you and I can't wait to keep hustling the way you hustled. What she's done in this state over the years is really almost unrivaled in several areas. Education, of course, is one. Uh, but her work on substance use and helping people overcome addiction is something for her that comes from the heart. Uh, also, her work in human trafficking, first in the nation laws. You are such a great leader in bringing people together, hearing everyone out, working through difficult issues, Issues, but always leaning in and getting big, thoughtful, progressive things done for our community. You don't back away from a challenge, but you bring people along with you. It has been my honor to work with and learn from you in Olympia in the state legislature and here at King County. Your work across so many issues will benefit the people of our county and our state for years to come. Beyond her passion for justice, she also exudes a joy and is a sheer delight to be with on council. I'll miss her presence and wish her the very best. Congratulations, Jeannie, on um, over 30 years in public service and um, getting to work with me for so many years, too. In retirement, wish you all the best. Thank you and congratulations. You let me know when I first started that there's always another side to the story, and indeed there is, and you are such a master at getting both sides to find a place in the middle that allows a needle to move just the right direction. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You have just always been at the cutting edge of progressive policy work and you inspire others to be their their best selves you've been a very cherished and dear friend uh, to me thank you and i look forward to a continued friendship for years to come I think we'll do one at a time. Uh, I, I should note that Council Member Cole Wells had requested that we honor Council Member McDermott first as the senior member, and we, we screwed up, <laughs> but I think. <laughs> um, but before we advance to the next video, I think I'd like to give my colleagues an opportunity. I know everyone has said a brief statement in the video, 
but to add their, their voices if there's things you'd like to share to Jeannie or to the public about her. And I don't know, we'll first come, first serve. Councilmember Perry. Well, I was curious what Councilmember Von Reichbauer would have said. We will let Councilmember Von Reichbauer open. <laughs> oh, if, I, if I've been asked, Jeannie, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I must have been out having a glass of wine with you when they did the interview. <laughs> uh, you know, what's neat about Gene is uh, we've got, we know each other from Olympia, but more importantly, when I first came on board here, you know, I realized how important personal relationships are. And when I first met you officially, we had a mutual friend from the state senate say, you're going to like her. You know why? Because you can trust her. Your word is golden and you have been the ballast for the ship. You have been the ballast on so many issues. You've pride, you pride yourself on your word, you pride yourself on working with anybody who can have common sense, and you pride yourself on your partner in crime, Alex. You know, it's a team effort when you talk about you. You've got a great staff, you've got a great staff, but you also have a great partner in, in serving other people and it's really been a privilege to get to know you both well socially professionally and personally thank you very much anyone else like to offer remarks we can kind of go down the dais i guess councilor zahala <laughs> thank you uh I, I i was speaking with council member cole wells Jeannie, my friend uh, a couple weeks ago at a 36 ld event and I told her this story of how when I first met her, I was very intimidated by her because in 2019, throughout my campaign, I would be on, in these public forums, in these debates, and to my left would be the civil rights icon, Larry Gossett, and to my right would be the badass feminist icon, Jeannie Cole Wells. <laughs> and then there's little old me, a nobody in the political world, and so every day I would walk up to each of them and say, hello, sir, hello, <clears throat> ma'am, so good to see you, so good to see you. <laughs> But eventually, once I got to the council, uh, I saw the, the, the velvet glove part of the, <laughs> part of the iron fist. Is that what they said about you in the news? Because Jeannie is not somebody to be in intimidated by. She is so kind and so warm and so welcoming despite all of her accomplishments. And she was one of the first people on the council to welcome me with open arms, have me co-sign on her legislation and learn the legislative process. I think the first thing we did was the tenant protections legislation together and every single time I would watch Jeannie just nonstop produce council led legislation in a way that I think is kind of un unprecedented and so I was learning a lot from you the whole time just thank you for being yourself thank you for having such a kind heart caring about so many people who like I said on the video living on the margins but also being so warm and welcoming toward everyone around you we really appreciate you and I know the best is yet to come We really have a, had a chance to work together on so many things and accomplish so much, and on very few occasions worked against each other. And I'm glad that those are so few and far in between because that's no fun, um, working against a friend like that. And um, it's a big challenge. And working with you means that we're gonna work together and advance the ball um, for so many people across the county and on so many um, causes. It's been a real pleasure to do that and I know um, we'll, we'll both continue to do that for years to come. Jeannie, I think I first met you when I was a young staffer on the staff of the Senate Democratic Caucus, and you probably don't even remember me because I was back, you know, one of those that, uh, behind the scenes, but, uh, you know, you were someone I always looked up to even before I was in the legislature. And then when I was in the House of Representatives, you were in the Senate. And I always felt like I had a friend. It can be, you know, they always, one of the jokes in Olympia is the, uh, I think it's the other party's the opponent, but the other chamber's the enemy. <laughs> and sometimes we joke about the, I was in the people's house and she was in the upper chamber. But I always felt like I could walk over there and have someone I could talk candidly and strategize with. And like Pete said, someone who can be trusted. I, I was talking with Pete the other day, one of the, one of the things that I think I will miss with, with both of my colleagues is a shared experience. You know, those of us who serve on this council, there's something that 
I don't know, it's like going through trauma together. <laughs> and it's the same thing in the legislature. And, and we all spend a decade or so in a particular institution that shapes us and who we are. And it gives, I think, Pete, Joe, Jeannie, and I a shared experience and a point of reference and sort of ways of doing things and an understanding of each other that might be slightly different than the way other people look at things. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to miss that. Um, when I was thinking about my uh, experiences with Jeannie, my probably very favorite, and it's not even work-related, is having the opportunity. I was on vacation one holiday. It turned out we were in the same city, my husband and I, as Jeannie and Alex, and had one of the most lovely dinners in Puerto Vallarta on the, on the porch, uh, looking out over the ocean for several hours, and that is one of my best vacation memories. Uh, spending time together so I consider you a good friend, not just uh, a colleague. The other thing is you're really good at this, uh, at how there's things the public don't see about how to get a piece of legislation or a policy from A to Z. And one example I remember, and I don't have all the details, but when I was budget chair one year, we did sort of panels or topical groups, and you were leading one of those and had brought forward a set of proposals. And I remember they were not where we needed to go. And you had brought these forward for a hearing and discussion. And I remember, oh, what's she doing? She's going to get us. And I remember you just said, trust me. And what Jeannie had done is taken a bunch of ideas people had and made sure they all were heard. They all were aired, A-I-R-E-D. And the challenges with them came out in public. You know, it, it became self-evident. So that when time came to close that budget, she was able to bring forward amendments that got us where we were going to go. It's those subtle things about process and inclusion and what kind of communication has to take place and timelines that there's a, there's a science to this process sometimes and you're really, really good at it. So we'll miss you uh, for that. But uh, if I say more, I'm gonna get teared up. So I just, uh, hope we get to stay in touch and, and hope we get to remain friends for, for many years moving forward. Congratulations. Well, it's uh, hard to uh, say so long, but not goodbye to uh, maybe my best friend here on the council who I've been able to work with for eight years. Um, uh, through a, a lot of fun times and a lot of hard work. I served as your vice chair uh, when you chaired the budget committee, uh, Jeannie, during uh, a national pandemic, something we hadn't seen for 100 years. We had, a, I don't know, 1.6 billion federal dollars or so come to us to spend, and you led us in a principled and strong way to look out for the two and a quarter million people in this county and look out for those who would be most adversely impacted. Uh, and it was a tremendous lesson to watch and sit beside you in your inclusive way where you bring people together, you include them in the work, and you listen, and then you move forward and get things done. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, I think what I think about most uh, when I think about you, though, is your track record on women's rights. And it was mentioned in, in the video a little bit, but if I could add to it, you served uh, for the National Conference of State Legislatures twice as president of their Women's Legislative Network. You're a member of the UW Women's Center on Anti-Trafficking, uh, CSEC, the Commercially Sexually Exploited Children Statewide Coordinating Committee, State Task Force Against Human Trafficking, created by your Senate Bill 5884 in 2015. Of course, you've done a lot of work here at the county with our Women's Advisory Board, lead our annual women's panel, which you actually started, created. I hope that tradition will continue. Uh, and you've served uh, in higher uh, academia as expert witness and professor. Um, so it was with that record, if I might, that a couple of years ago, I had the occasion to be in Nashville. Now, uh, Nashville is interesting in the women's history movement. Uh, because when we were, as a country, fixing a foundational wrong by granting women through the 19th Amendment the right to vote, the 35th state was Tennessee. And it was a big battle. They called it the Battle of the Roses. Uh, the pro-suffrage folks wore yellow roses on their lapel, and the anti-suffrage folks wore red. Much of this fight occurred across the street from the state capitol at the Hermitage Hotel. Uh, and I had a chance to be there and was thinking of you. 
and wanted to get you a couple mementos from the Hermitage Hotel to honor your decades-long dedication to women and women's rights. Uh, the first is a, and I think you might wear this, it's not expensive, but it is a yellow rose uh, uh, that I think you can wear on your uh, lapel. Uh, the second is a, a replica pin from the time, Votes for Women, was kind of the campaign a pin uh, from the suffrage movement in 1920. Uh, and the third, and I think Alex might like these better than you, is a Votes for Women deck of cards that uh, was put out by the Centennial Commission in 2020 to commemorate the passage of the 19th Amendment. And I think uh, you and Alex will have a little more time to play these cards uh, up on Woodby Island. Uh, but uh, I thank you so much, Jeannie, for your kindness to me and for your graciousness and your compassion. And I uh, will miss you, but look forward to continuing to see you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, Jeannie, we will always be classmates. <laughs> we started at the King County Council together, although coming from very, very different directions. And I think that uh, I've shared this a lot, but for people who may not know, we did our training, our new council member training right here. We sat in those seats down there and the clerk of the council and others came and taught us about the rules. And when they went through the county charter, they kept referring to council men. Councilmen, Councilmen, and Councilmember Cole Wells and I were sitting there like, and? <laughs> and so, uh, and, and it was just, it, I, I, I got my first uh, sense of who uh, you are as a leader because you were just not going to let that stand. We immediately <laughs> started the charter uh, initiative to change the charter so that it said council person or council member. And then we took on the entire code. And I remember so clearly you saying, you know, I did this at the state and it was, such, it was, it was a hard work and it was very controversial and I just don't really want to do it again. And I said, let's do it. And we did. <laughs> and so since then, it's just, it has been such, uh, an ex such a lifetime experience for me to get to work with you. Um, I, of course, knew who you were before we got to work together. And um, I always learned from working with you. Uh, we've done a lot together. I think this is a theme that you're hearing from all of us is that how collaborative you are, bringing people in and, uh, and doing things together. Um, after the gender neutral language, we did a number of different things. The biggest was probably the COVID budgets, uh, which you've, we've talked about before. And I don't think that record will ever be broken, 13 budgets in a year. <laughs> that was wild or two. Yeah, but still never, never to be broken. Um, and, uh, but you didn't, you, you didn't ever try to do it alone. And in that case, you brought in um, myself as the chair and Councilmember Dombowski and Councilmember uh, Dunn. And we, we worked together on these things. And so that when the product came out for people to react to, it was already, um, it was already built in with a lot of support. And that's how you get big things done. Um, I've just been endlessly impressed with how you live your values and always, always, in my uh, view, have used your position and power to improve conditions for people with less power and just kept doing it. Um, you've never seemed to stop being a teacher, even in all your years as an elected official, uh, putting together the forums. Every time we do a proclamation, that you do a proclamation, I learn something. Uh, and I've just personally benefited as a woman leader from your leadership and the and the platform you've created. And it's been alluded to, but also just everybody needs to know that Jeannie just loves to have fun. She's a lot of fun. Uh, the very first thing we did was have a reception upstairs, and there might have been some beverages that aren't technically allowed in the courthouse. Uh, <laughs> was eight years ago, statute of limitations is run. Uh, I got to catch a fish that came flying over this <laughs> dais <laughs> because of Council Member Cole Wells. Not an experience I think I'll ever have again. And so thank you for the collegiality, your leadership, your mentorship, and, uh, and a lot of fun. And we will miss you around here, uh, but we hope to see you uh, continuing to, to be out there and you know, holding us accountable <laughs> to do the right things. Thanks, Jeannie. Thank you, Chair. Jeannie, I have really appreciated working with you. I find you fierce. 
Uh, I'm impressed with your dogged focus on getting legislation through, on working hard from an amazing um, number of vantage points, um, bringing people to the dais to speak. You, I think you have the record, I'm not sure, but really engaging the community to, to iterate, to reiterate what it is that um, is of value on the different pieces of legislation or the proclamations or recognitions or whatever that is. You work very hard to engage people here in the chamber and I very much appreciate that. Uh, you are a champion of women and I appreciate that. Uh, I hope to uh, step into some of that as I go forward. I'm very, very focused on um, you know, basic equal protections uh, for folks under the law and uh, pursuing that. Um, and your, your uh, very outspoken support of your district and the arts. So being a champion of the arts, doing this doors open legislation as part of a swan song was um, what an amazing thing to be able to do and to bring forward for our communities uh, writ large. Um, and, and to know that all of those things dovetail into behavioral health, which is also a big concern of yours, and you're a champion of LGBTQ community uh, rights as well. And I, I just um, watch you sort of live out loud and have fun. My fun quotient's not so high, but yours is pretty high. And so I watch you uh, and admire that. And, um, and I also have really appreciated when I've come to you struggling with some of the differences that Council Member Von Reichbauer brought up that we sometimes have with our colleagues and you just have this love, loving way of representing different views with curiosity and helping me understand that you know frames of reference might be considered more deeply uh, to come up with some really good legislation because of the differences. And so there have been a few moments that I have encountered that with you and I've really, really appreciated your guidance in that. You're, <laughs> You're going to be missed uh, a lot uh, on council and um, there is a voice from legislation that you bring that's strong in that way. I'm, I don't come from a legislative background, but uh, you, you bring that sort of carriage, that state person approach and, uh, and I very much have appreciated you holding that here and bringing that professionalism and that view to the council as I've seen it. So thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful next chapter. Council Member Dunn. Are you with us? You are muted. I'm, I'm here, Dave. Thank would, Yep. Would you Jeannie. Uh, please go ahead? Jeannie. Jeannie, you're the best. You rock. Uh, you know how much I appreciate you. And uh, stick around because we got we got more work for you, more committees, more fun stuff. Thank you for being a good friend throughout the years. Thank you. Um, at this point, um, I would like to turn the microphone over to Vice Chair Council Member Cole Wells. Oh, take a deep breath. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> quite something for me. I, it's very difficult for me to sit and listen to people saying lovely things about me. <laughs> it honestly is. but. Thank you all for the, the wonderful sentiments that you expressed to me. I've got my, a couple of my staff have passed out a little parting gift. Uh, as you know, I like to give gifts and do that a lot, but the, I looked and looked and looked, and I think these are, are really lovely, as you'll see, and represent my district and Joe's, pretty much. Uh, but I... I've honestly loved serving on this council. I had succeeded Larry Phillips, as was mentioned. Um, I was appointed to the State House when he was elected to the King County Council. That was, except for four years ago, the toughest election I'd ever had as an, for an appointment. And uh, then when he contacted me about a year before he made the announcement he was not going to run again and he wanted me to think about it, he was going to decide, and, but he wanted me to go for his position. I thought, no, this is not going to happen. A year went by and he called me and was announcing that day. And 
honestly, my first inclination after being very appreciative and flattered, all of that, was no, I, I can't leave the Senate. I loved serving in the Senate. But when I really thought about what I might be able to do in working more locally and immediately, rather than looking at broad statewide public policy, I became enamored with the idea of serving on the council. And I made the decision to go for it. I already had some friends here. And I've never regretted that decision. It's truly been immensely special to me in my career and in my life. Um, I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just I will never, never regret it. I will never, never forget how special this has been to me. And I love having my husband, Alex, whom you all know well, um, my lovely husband, Alex, rather. <laughs> Got to remember to say that. My son, Kyle, and his family, his wife, Allie, and the fabulous, fabulous Frances Fern, who might be a little shy right now. She will be four years old this coming Friday. We're going to her birthday party. <laughs> and I have um, a few staff here who have been so fabulous, and some who still work for the county, but not with me anymore. But of course, Adam Cooper, who's been my chief of staff all eight years while I've been here. and served as my legislative assistant in the Senate for the six years before that. And as some of us know, we get one staff in the legislature full time year round, more during the session. Also, uh, we have Clara Manahan, and many of you know her, and Lorena Gutierrez Perez who I'm thrilled are going to be staying on with my successor, Jorge Barone. Thank you. Yeah, just thrilled about that. Also here, Lily De Leon, who just accepted a position in local services. And, and I, Nick Bowman has been here, and John Fowler, whom you all know, and Tanya Mondaka uh, are all still with the council. So a special thank you to all of them. And um, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of choked up. People have been saying to me, aren't you excited? And I'd say, not really. Um, am I sad? No, not really. I'm kind of a mixed, I have a lot of mixed feelings. Hi, Shana. <laughs> Yes, we we actually got the presentation already, but thank you. But we'll thank you. <laughs> um, I this is such a moment that we always think about retiring and how wonderful it'll be, and I'm sure it will be. I mean, I think of the days I won't have to get nervous because something big is coming up, and I'm worried about it. Uh, I chaired my last committee meeting last Wednesday. I've, um, I've still got tons of email and have to do all the archiving. <laughs> Move out of the office by next Tuesday. Uh, it's, there's a whole lot of stuff I have to do, but this is my last council meeting, one I'll never forget, and I can't talk anymore. I love Joe McDermott. We, were, we served together in the House and the Senate, and here he'll always be especially uh, special to me. And um, I love you all. I hope you enjoy this little parting gift, and I will, I will still be in your life somehow. Thank you.
and thank you to all the fabulous staff here. Just incredible. I'll never forget you all.